Welcome back to the channel, guys. I hope you're all doing well. So let me know before we get started in this, where are you using Rhonda? So I'm just recently starting to build her, but I found some things out on stream today that I shared. Some people knew about it, but the far majority of players had absolutely no clue. And I think this is a really, really cool mechanic that actually extends past Rhonda. Before we get into this, though, I do have to say thank you to BlueStacks for sponsoring the video. We will be playing inside of the BlueStacks Android emulator application today. If you guys want to check it out, click the link down below, download BlueStacks, download Raid through BlueStacks, and it goes a long way in supporting the channel. I appreciate it, but better yet, for you guys, when you download it, you can do multiple things. First thing, the thing that I utilize BlueStacks the most for is the Play Store points, okay? Whenever I make purchases in the game, which granted are a lot fewer now than I used to, but whenever I make purchases, I earn these Google Play points. Now, these are not available everywhere, but whenever I earn these, I can go through, claim for these rewards down here, or I can just claim for Google Play gift cards down here at the bottom, whatever you want. You're literally making the purchases in game, and then it's giving you points in Google Play. So I never purchase through the Player and Play app personally. It's always done through the BlueStacks application. You could also make getting um, multiple accounts set up much, much easier. If you're trying to level up your referral accounts, playing different rate accounts at the same time, it makes it very easy because you can launch this multi-instance manager, playing multiple accounts, syncing them together, your actions you do on the account number one will be mirrored over to account number two, making it very easy to level up your referral accounts. I actually did an entire video last year talking about this whole process, so it definitely helps out. You can also add some macros, so on and so forth. BlueStacks has a lot, and if for nothing else, download it to play Raid as well as some other mobile games. So talking about that, thank you guys if you do decide to download it, and also thank you to BlueStacks for sponsoring the video. Now talking about Rhonda. Obviously, Ronda is the free champion you get after seven days currently. I think it's going to end sometime in early 2023. I'm not for sure January, February, maybe even March, but you bet, might as well log in, claim her, get her built up as soon as possible. But if you're watching this video, I assume you already have this champion. So the thing I want to be highlighting today is actually her A2 ability. Now, obviously, this is a pretty awesome part of her kit, but it attacks one enemy three times if you're using it on a clan boss. Her entire kit says go Giant Slayer. Giant Slayer Mastery, huge thumbs up. This will ignore shield buffs and 30% of the target's defense. This ability hits hard. And this whole showcase, I've actually had to change her gear because my gear was one-shotting literally everybody that I was going against that was reasonable to go against. And uh, it was making the showcase impossible. So the second part of her kit, the first part hits really hard. The second part places a block passive skills debuff for two turns before attacking. This debuff cannot be resisted also places a block active skills debuff for two turns after attacking. This debuff cannot be resisted. So right here is what I want to showcase. Not my start menu, but instead, Rhonda paired with one of these three champions. Not the offers, but these three. Okay, that's not what I was showing. Harkin, Harkin Great Blade is the one I'm using. She's a Void Affinity champion, so she's not going to have the issues like a champion like Vizier. Vizier is not a Void Affinity Champion, so if he weak hits, he may not be able to do this secret trick. But also, Tahana Rock. So honestly, Tahana Rock or Harkin, two best options for this combination. Vizier is another good option if you don't have these other two. But let me show you guys, instead of telling you what I am talking about, okay? So let's go to Doom Tower real quick. So first up, I want to show you all Arbiter, Lydia, and Harkin. So Lydia is sitting at, let's see, 381 accuracy. Harkin is sitting at a total accuracy of 139. So 139 accuracy, that is very, very low, obviously. So let's jump in here, see how this actually plays out. Some of you guys already are catching on what's about to be shown, and some of you are still waiting in anticipation. So we're going to go ahead and lock Siffy out. Okay, there we go. Poison sensitivity, block buffs, and we have block active skills. We use Harkin's A3 ability. This is what I'm talking about, okay? Attacks one enemy applies a debuff spread effect, taking two random debuffs from the target and placing them on all enemies. Also extends the duration of those debuffs by two turns, which may, means all those debuffs are not going to be four turn duration and will not extend the duration of debuffs on the initial target. So we attack this Siffy and then everything's resisted. So my Harkin, sitting at 139 accuracy, is doing what you would expect her to do. Everything is getting resisted because she can't place any debuffs because she has no accuracy. Well, let's go ahead and try something else out, okay? So we're going to take... Harkin, Great Blade, same champion we're just now using. We're actually going to go in here and put some speed boots on her because I took them off for the other test with Lydia because she was way too fast. But I had to change her speed a little bit because trying her out in the arena, 
with the speed that she was at was just not working. She was way too slow before, but now we have her pretty fast, like 260 or so. Uh, let's go ahead and try with Rhonda. doesn't matter who's in the lead. It's going to play no difference whatsoever. So here we go. Hopefully Rhonda goes after Harkin. So we actually tested or before Harkin makes sense, right? So here we go. Now, Rhonda, please do not kill this champion. Okay. Take it a little bit easy. Here we go. We have block passives and block active skills. Now Harkin Great Blade comes in and spreads everything. So what this shows is that the effects of the debuff from Rhonda, the abilities that it has, which is cannot be resisted, means whenever Harkin attacks and spreads those debuffs, they also can't be resisted. This lends itself very, very well to champions like Astralith. Some top plat pushers use Astralith plus 200 rock to actually spread the bombs to champions with stone skin. So all you have to do is use your Astralith to place the bomb on another good affinity champion and then have somebody spread them. And it doesn't matter if the enemy has a thousand resistance, 10,000 resistance. It doesn't matter. Those debuffs cannot be resisted, can go through stone skin. That's the uh, bombs. The block actives and block passes cannot go through stone skin. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to actually get it utilized in things like the arena, especially higher up in the arena. But if you're lower in the arena and you have Harkin, plus you have Rhonda, or if you have champions like Roshkard, Roshkard also brings a block active skills, which means the enemy can only do their A1 ability. The block passive is so good for the Doom Tower waves because now those Siffies who are cleansing the Rotos no longer cleanse the Rotos, and the Rotos who were only taking 50% damage are no longer taking that or no longer stopping at 50% HP. So you're opening a lot of possibilities to continually lock down that wave on especially stage 114. Bring in some good damage dealers. You can one-shot the Rotos now, no problem whatsoever. Bring in some good damage dealers, good control champions, and you've just enabled yourself to basically clear stage 114, which is arguably one of the hardest stages of the Doom Tower. Uh, so it depends on your account. Obviously, it's going to still be difficult. Geomancer is a great option to bring in addition. Geomancer is an amazing champion, reflecting that damage back to those champions once he's hit by those Rotos. Great champion. Let's look at Roshkard. So Roshkard the Tower, Barbarian also, or B Banner Lord, right? Is he? Uh, no. Sacred Order, maybe? I may have just missed him. Uh, Roshkard the Tower. Okay, here we go. His A2 ability attacks one enemy, places a block active skills debuff and a block buff debuff for two turns. These debuffs cannot be resisted. So cannot be resisted means once it's applied to that first person, then you have Harkin, you have Tuhana Rock, you have Vizier come in, spread those two debuffs, and now everybody has those two debuffs. You got to make sure, though, if you're spreading debuffs, that you don't have, say, four or five different debuffs. So champion like Rio, she places like five debuffs. It's not going to spread them all. It's going to spread two of those debuffs. It could spread the worst of the two. So you got to be very mindful. Plan out the order of the team. You also can't spread Provoke. Can't spread uh, fear, true fear. You can't spread stun, sleep, none of that. So just the typical debuffs. Uh, but you have uh, Rosh card. You have Baron. Baron has a solid option. A little bit difficult to make it work, but it's a little more unique, okay? So his A2 has a decreased defense. This debuff is guaranteed. Whenever this is placed, this can be placed through block debuffs, okay? So even if the enemy has block debuffs, this can still be placed. No problem whatsoever. Very unique in that sense. I do want to show you guys something else before we jump in here. Is a screenshot. Shout out to Loki. Loki was actually a member or somebody in the Discord who messaged me and has been talking to me about this stuff for a while now. And since Rhonda has came out, I think it's became a lot more accessible to a lot more players. This screenshot right here is his Arbiter, his uh, Harkin, Roshkard, and Solus right here. So basically, Arbiter is boosting. Roshkard is placing the block active skills and block debuffs or block buffs. So now the enemy can only use their A1 abilities. They can't cleanse anything. They can't proc swift parry. None of that stuff. None of that nonsense. And then Solus is just going to come in and wreck everybody. So the amount of options that this gives players is quite a bit. You can definitely make some pretty fun teams with it. I want to show you guys some stuff that I've done with it um, so far in the arena. It's very, very tricky because when you start climbing this part of the arena, a lot of players have stone skin. I don't want to kill people in one shot. Rhonda hits like a truck. She hits very, very hard. So I got to be very careful about how I approach this. Now, the damage dealer you use doesn't really matter. If you have a defense-based damage dealer, it's going to be a little bit better. If you have, more importantly, a damage dealer who buffs themselves, that's going to be very, very useful. Because if you use something like Kaimar, then you're going to need that buff. I'm using Arbiter, but Kaimar, really fast, no problem whatsoever. 
My Chimor is kind of slow, but having that sleep going off very, very early is great. My Rhonda is currently sitting at 261 speed. Nothing else matters, okay? She's not built to do damage. Honestly, if I was going to use her regularly like this, I'd probably build her quite a bit different. I'd build her to counter specific teams. This build is not the build you necessarily should be using on your Rhonda. The idea of this video is to share with you guys something that you may not have realized that you could do, which is spreading debuffs that can't be resisted and it requires no accuracy on the person placing them originally or the person spreading them a second time. Now, I don't know what happened there. I guess the mastery cleansed that, but either way, that's okay because none of these champions have a passive ability that I really care about to begin with. So yeah, she placed the passive, destroyed some HP, and then the black passive got disappeared, and now everybody has black active skills, so only A1 abilities go off, and there's no threat, right? Like, who on their team is going to kill me with just their A1 abilities? Nobody. Nobody's going to kill me on that team with just their A1 abilities. We have Hefrat coming in with his increased attack, and then boom, the team's erased, except for the uh, strong affinity champion, but guess what? Oh, wait. Transfer debuffs. Well, that that is a situation right there where it gets a little bit more complicated, okay? If they're transferring their debuffs, yeah. It's going to throw things, throw a wrench in things, basically. But what you're seeing is a lot of different possibilities for teams if you want to use this approach. If you want to use the approach of block and passives as well as their active skills. So for here, let's go ahead and jump in here and see how this works. Uh, what I'll do is I'll boost that Valkyrie's getting a little bit of turn meter. I don't want her to place the counterattack or anything. So we're going to go ahead and use that skill from Rhonda. Now Valkyrie can't use her counterattack. Arbiter is not going to do her turn meter boost because now she has block active skills and block passives for four turns. So for four turns, I'm not really worried about anything, to be honest. Hefrat comes in, uses his A2, and boom, wipes out the entire team. This is not going to be a strat that's super viable, very high up in the arena. Let's try to get another match or two. Here's a great example, okay? So this is such a good example because we have a Rodos who typically couldn't be one shot, but now it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he can be one shot because his passive is going to be blocked. Hopefully, right? Hopefully we don't kill this Arbiter. Okay, good. She proc reaction. Just a block active, so that's not great. Plus the Rodos has immunity? What? A Rodos with immunity? Well, at least he... Well, hopefully he doesn't kill me. That's the only thing I guess I can say. At least, hopefully he doesn't kill me. Uh, because I've never seen a Rodos in immunity gear. Maybe he's built to counter Rhonda's with Harkin, Great Blades. Maybe that's the strategy. Obviously, Hefrak's going to just run right through him anyways. Uh, but whenever you can't use your increased turn meter, you can't use your A3 from Herndig, you can't use Ninja's A2 to, or A3 to freeze everybody, it's going to be a more difficult match for sure. I just refreshed a few times, and we're going to try to go against this team. I got a feeling this team is going to have some stone skin gear. It probably will. Unfortunately, I already know. It's going to have some stone skin. It's going to be a pain, an absolute nightmare, and then we're going to have to just reset. Okay, no stone skin. Sweet. This is what I love to see. Actually, this is really perfect. Because this kind of team here, Rhonda just places it on, let's say, Duchess. Technically, Crisk would have probably been better. So then everybody else could have got a four-turn block passives and block active. But hopefully we can kill him before that really matters. So we'll extend and spread. There we go. Four-turn, 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 four-turn. Now, Kandrafon is still very threatening on his A1 ability alone. But now, no passives, no actives. So that 15% damage mitigation from Duchess doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Can't use it. Rhonda can come in with her AoE ability as well if she survives, which she does not. Not very surprising. And there we go. Everybody's getting wiped down because people are dying. Hefrak kills them off the rest of the way. Well, my allies are dying, so then Hefrak just kills the people. I should have used her A2. Wasn't thinking, just talking. Uh, let's see what Parkin's A2 does. This is a weekend. Hey, there we go. Some more damage. Very nice. Kandrafon can only use his A1 ability. So there's literally no way for him to win. And now there's no... Wait. Okay, that was a passive. Okay, it tricked me. I was like, wait, how do he just use his A3? He could only not use his passive. I guess the uh, block active skill fell off from the damage, probably from Hefrak. But either way, guys, hopefully that gives you a little bit of uh, creativity. Maybe you can start creating something a little different from these teams using that. Um, this debuff can't be resisted, so an irresistible debuff. Using that paired with a debuff spread champion going into either the arena or going into the Doom Tower or even just dungeons. It doesn't matter. Wherever you can test it out, go ahead, try it. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.